had a friend who had a monitor lizard, I didn't like run out of the house screaming. I mean, it's like, <laughs> hey, that's my stork. Oh, that's yeah. weird, but okay. You know what I mean? Like, it becomes this thing of like, oh my God, if she ever falls, right. fall the stork. Right. 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 It right. would right. all fall apart. Yeah. Hey, Internet, it's Paul, it's Matt, the Dork Lords. We are here talking about WandaVision, Season 1, Episode 3, now in color. Uh, it is, in fact, in color. We open with a Partridge Family slash Brady Bunch style credit sequence. Mary Tyler Moore. Right, right. Uh, showing us what TV era we're in, the 70s. Um, and then we immediately see the uh, uh, doc, Dr. Nielsen, I think is his name. Dr. Nielsen is checking on a pregnant Wanda. She's at four months. Yeah, like the ratings. Hey, through the roof. That's what. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, Wanda's at four months, even though she just noticed she was pregnant like the previous night. Um, we end with Geraldine, aka Monica Rambeau, being ejected from Westview by Wanda, and what I assume are sword personnel swarming her in a field <laughs> although they do have guns drawn on her at first <laughs> like oh okay um and we hear the monkeys daydream believer playing as we go yes. to end credits a good surgery generally speaking uh what'd you think of the episode uh i enjoyed it um you know uh it's certainly you know uh it is in keeping with the previous episodes and that you have uh main storyline um but as this is where it's been leading, and um, it's starting to make me um, uh, take stronger to the theories of uh, Mephisto wanting to uh, create children. The fact that the stakes are being raised um, in this, uh, you know, and it, we had our first mention of her life um, right. before the events of this show. That her twin so, brother Pietro was killed by Ultron. Right. So yeah, so all that, you know, I enjoyed. I thought that was all good. Yeah, um, and so as we mentioned before, it seems like each era is defined by a, a life event. Again, yeah. So first episode was marriage. Second mm -hmm. episode, she gets pregnant. This episode, she gives birth. I'm not sure what the next phase would, maybe the kids' first words? Something like that, maybe? I'm yeah, trying to think like, you know, like uh, in the, in the, arc of a family something to do with the kids right either the kids walk or the kids uh, have their first word right. mama like, yeah oh. i'm wondering if uh if their um their growing up is going to be accelerated in other words you might we might see them going to school next episode or something yeah yeah maybe so the two kids are billy and tommy they are from the yes. comics they're yes. the young avengers uh their names are wiccan and speed and so yeah, can... like I guess technically, um, the story uh, created the the Billy and Tommy in the comics, and uh, then they were revealed to be parts of uh, Mephisto's soul, and so he sort of took them back. Oh and, right, Demon and I believe kids. it was the grief. Yeah, I believe it was the grief of losing that that caused uh, um, her to do the whole House of M thing. But um, and uh, in a way, I'm less clear of the adult versions of uh, their children come in, and I would assume the names are Billy and Tommy. But yes, the the sort of code names or uh, superhero names are Wiccan and uh, Speed. So, uh, and there is a rumor, uh, you know, one of those. The internet's never wrong, Paul. But yes. uh, the internet apparently has a rumor that Billy and Tommy are going to be in. The Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. So perhaps oh, I we're seeing that. them. We're seeing them come of age in this show, mm -hmm. and then there'll okay. be characters that they can draw on for you know Phase Four or whatever. Well, certainly one of the things that everybody is anticipating is that these uh, the children will be a part of the Young Avengers. Yep. Um, along with uh, Cassie, uh, who's Ant Man's daughter, and, and uh, Hawkeye's who's daughter. already been cast in Hawkeye's. Well, is she his daughter? I think his, his, uh, the, the one he's mentoring, I guess. Oh, okay. Uh, young Hawkeye. Young Hawkeye. <laughs> the next Hawkeye. Because <laughs> he's uh, retire or die. The Daydream Believer song playing at the end. Obviously, there's a connection to dreaming and the, the reality of dreams. But also... And you know, uh, the fact that... Um, and watching it again makes me wonder if she's lucid dreaming. She being Wanda. Wanda. Yeah. 
And what we do see is that Westview seems to actually exist. It is a place. Right. And she's right. in it. But Right. Yeah, but to the extent where she might either A, decided, you know, I'm going to do this and I, you know, don't want anybody to mess with it. Um, I'm wondering if it, it isn't perhaps instead, um, I'm experiencing this as a dream and therefore I will control the elements of the dream that I like and do not like. Uh, kind of so, like, uh, what was that, uh, The Cell? Remember that movie? I think that uh, was like Jennifer Lopez and... Oh, Vincent D'Onofrio, where she goes yes. into his dreams and starts controlling his dreams to try to yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. catch a serial killer or whatever. Anyway. Right, yeah. There have been some movies like that. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, it'd be interesting. It, like, like she hasn't hurt anybody yet. So it's not like she's done something that... Uh, um, right. Notably, you know. when she kicks Monica Rambo, Monica Rambo out, she doesn't kill her. She right. doesn't, like, make her disappear. She's still yes. alive. She just pushes yes. her out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's possible she's aware of that, but you know, just the way that everybody is sort of um, experiencing this sort of like, oh, I don't know, like one of the things they cut out apparently when she was uh, when Monica Rambo or Geraldine was having that uh, being confronted by Wanda is you know one thing you see in the trailers is she says I don't know who I am I don't you know she says that but she doesn't say it in the scenes that we see. Right. Is that going to be later? Do we see like a you know, somewhere in the next few episodes, there's a flashback to this moment, or I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think that I think it was cut, and they decided that they wanted. Because I think it out. you see a different version of Monica Rambeau being ejected as well. I think there's a different. Yes, that's true. Visual of that, yeah. So that makes me wonder if it's not uh, that she's not so conscious of this thing, you know? Because so when you're uh, when you're saying lucid dreaming, you're suggesting that she is aware, but not aware enough of the actual reality you're saying or, or what, what? yes okay. yeah she like she might be like thinking oh this is nice you know this this fantasy world i want to live in it i don't want things to mess with it and the way in a dream you actually might be like you know some strange things might occur and you might say mm, i don't want to go in this direction i want to go over here to this you know Right, door, right. and then everything changed or whatever. But you still believe that you're a giant turtle walking through the whatever. You're like, oh, exactly. I believe yeah, that, yeah, but yeah. I don't want to yeah. go to the swimming pool, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. So, I mean, I could be wrong. She really could have broke out of that, you know, when she was confronting her to be like, you know, why are you here and all this, but we don't learn anything about that era. And also, it's a couple of times when she's lied to Vision. Yep. Yep. In fact, she reverses so, time again when Vision yep. comes in and says something is wrong, and then she just whoop and it does a jump yep. cut and he yep. comes back in and the it's like no we're we're done. So she she rewinds it like the beekeeper moment. The Daydream believer. The other thing I was just going to mention about the song is dreams. Yes, but also the song is about a you know it's the daydream believer and the homecoming queen. Uh, it's yes. it's a disillusioned couple living in suburbia. Mm. Um, and so, like the the shine is a little bit off the relationship. Oh, okay. And uh, so, anyway, there could be a little relevance there too. The six o'clock alarm would never ring. Never ring. Never ring. <laughs> We've got these moments where the townsfolk uh, do seem to acknowledge their plight, right? Yes. You've got the doctor who says, like, "Oh, you going on your vacation to Bermuda?" No, I don't think it's going to work out. You know, we can't escape. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. Um, and, of course, Herb, the neighbor, uh, first we see him trimming the hedge, but then sawing through a concrete wall. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, oh. And then when he's pointed out to him, he's like, yep. And he keeps going. You're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in that case, maybe, I don't know, he's almost stuck in some kind of loop there. But then later... Uh, he gives that line about how, well, he and Agnes are pointing out that they realize Geraldine is a is an outsider. Like, she right. doesn't have a house. She doesn't belong here, basically. And when questioned by Vision, he's like, well, no, she came here because we're all, I assume, fill in the, the gap is trapped. I mean, that's kind of what I feel like. But it doesn't have to be, but, what? you know. What, it sounds like you're making a supposition about what they're all experiencing. Well, so in other words, I feel like in that moment, Herb knows a lot, right? He realizes yeah. Geraldine is, was, came in here because we are trapped here and we can't get out and we're stuck in these loops like Westworld. 
<laughs> and uh, um, just the fact that they can they can acknowledge that a person is from the outside of right. This thing. Yeah, but I guess where I'm calling into question is you seem to be assuming a feeling about how they feel about what the situation they're in. Well, Agnes um, gets very up, like uh, scared in that moment. I feel like when she's like, "Shut up, shut up." When she turns around to Herb and is like, "Don't say what you're about to say." I get the feeling that, you know, because we were wondering whether Agnes is a villain or whether she's trapped along with them. She knows more, or she has she's on a different. Oh plane yeah, she knows more. I'm just than you know, her, but it, she does seem it, scared in that moment. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, but uh, it just makes you wonder about her the behavior of people who are trapped. You know, unless they're happy with being trapped then why aren't they trying to, you know, why are they suspicious yeah. of the person who's coming from outside? I just, I so, wonder, oh, good point. Uh, yeah, I just thought so, maybe these people are getting little moments of clarity and then fall back into patterns, but it's hard mm -hmm. to tell. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Agnes's fear is that if Wanda is, inter is, is reminded of reality, that she'll react dangerously. I think is kind of Agnes is like, don't, 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 don't. We don't want to disturb Wanda, I think is, I, I'm guessing uh, that that's her, the reason she gets so panicky, you know, when Vision's like, tell me more. Like, no, 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 no. Right, because um, to me, it suggests perhaps, I mean, the way they're both sort of speaking of Geraldine slash uh, Monica sort of like suspiciously is that, you know, um, they don't want to be rescued. Okay, I didn't think about that. That's a good point. There's, there's yeah, the, I mean, could, like, why bring it up if you if you if you're you know hoping that something good is going to happen of it? And it's a very fine line they're trying to walk with uh, Vision, where it's sort of like, hey, you know, you should be suspicious of this person, but not about why we're here. Yeah. Well, I get the feeling that say, let's from Agnes's point of view, she wouldn't want Geraldine to be left alone with Wanda, which she is, because she's worried that. The outsider, Geraldine, is going to spill the beans to Wanda. And so that would be maybe her reasoning for like, da, ba, 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 we don't want... I guess when she's willing to let it go. She could I mean, she could find any reason to walk through that door, yeah. and yet she doesn't. She's only willing to, to gossip outside. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, you're right. It's it's still the, the mystery box is still... Uh, the yeah. box is still closed. Yes. Um, also, you know, for as much as Vision's disguising his look... He does a yes. super speed in public. He takes the yes. doctor and runs yes. him over to the... And the doctor's like, whoa, yes. that was weird. Well, one and thing like, that's amusing to me is how uh, much the uh, plot, or at least uh, their motivations a number of times are, oh, we have to make sure that no one figures it out. And m more often than not, when someone is presented with some suspicionless information, they're like, oh, well. Yeah, oh, you, <laughs> you can run impossibly <laughs> fast. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. all right, boy. Who don't try not to do that so much. Uh, Spe you know. That's a good point. Plus, in some ways, the conceit of the, like, oh, there's a stork in the house, and yes. oh, she'll go, I mean, like, maybe just acknowledge there's a stork in the house. <laughs> like, <laughs> I get it. It's a little odd, but I had a friend who had a monitor lizard. I didn't, like, run out of the house screaming. I mean, it's like, <laughs> hey, that's my stork. Oh, that's yeah. weird, but okay. You know what I mean? Like, it becomes this thing of, like, oh, my God, if she ever falls right. fall the stork, right. 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 it would right. all fall apart. Yeah, yeah, but certainly, though, you know, certainly within uh, sitcom behavior. Yeah, it's right. It's in sitcom behavior. It's the idea of, like, we don't want to, um, our public persona in the neighborhood will be tarnished if we're seen as eccentric. Right. It's kind of that thing. So we don't want yeah, to be yeah, the eccentrics. Yeah. Right. We get the uh, Hydra Soak commercial. Yes. Um, as you had pointed out before, the idea that, uh, you know, the, the commercials seem to be bringing up negative memories. Yeah. Like it's, yeah, it's yeah. the way that she maybe is handling negative uh, memories, negative emotions. She's boxing them into commercials. Mm. I wonder if uh, there's some sort of brainwashing implication of it. Yeah, now apparently I I had to look this up. I'm not going to be like, I'm aware of every Agents of <laughs> S.H.I.E.L.D. episode. But apparently on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. there was this thing about Hydra soap. And they dropped this idea that, there was, uh, yeah. that Hydra had put out the soap that was like 
had a memory altering ability. Ah, to it. okay. It so is. maybe it's a reference to that, but geez, talk about dropping an obscure reference. Mm, that is obscure. A thing yeah, that not and, many people you know, will and get. that'd be a surprise since uh, it's my. I'm of the opinion that uh, a number of these Marvel shows that were before, like Agents of Shield. Right. Are going to be determined to be in another dimension, another just kind universe. Of move right past it. So maybe it could just be, you know, either a coincidence or just an Easter, Easter egg, egg that they want yeah. to put in there. Yeah. Or they um, just took the same story element, even though it doesn't have direct reference to. It does say, you know, release the goddess within. Yes. You get the idea that here within this little bubble, Wanda is the goddess in this area. Um, mm -hmm. Do we think because we are getting these Hydra references? Um, that maybe Hydra is somehow involved in... Yeah, I don't know. You know? I um, hear you, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't know either. We've got S.W.O.R.D., obviously, hanging out outside this bubble. Right, right, yes. Um, maybe... I certainly would like Hydra to be dead. We haven't really heard about Hydra for a while. So. Right, right. <laughs> I think they were actually on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. At, for a while after the... Uh, they kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, them. but you didn't hear about them as much... Correct. A number of se uh, seasons in. Um, what do we take from the fact that Monica is still in her 70s garb outside the bubble? She gets ejected. She's still right. in her outfit, her hair. Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's one of two things. Either we know that she's an outsider. Everybody's like, no, oh, she just doesn't even have a home. So maybe she put on that outfit to blend in and is still in it. Hence, she, that's her reality. In reality, right. she was dressed that way. Or right. it implies that whatever reality Wanda creates inside can survive coming outside the bubble, mm. 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 Uh, which mm. sounds yeah, more dangerous. <laughs> but, sure, uh, yes, yes. Although, well, good. actually, this would be a good point. If, if that's true, I was going to say maybe it suggested that Geraldine would still think she's Geraldine, but I don't think Geraldine thought she was Geraldine, now that I think about it. Do you Back mean in like the whole episode time two. she didn't think she was Geraldine, or I say, I don't um, know. at the moment that, that she's having the conversation that she in episode that two? Geraldine. It's I didn't think Geraldine knew she was Monica Rambo. I agree. Moment where she's like, I'm Geraldine. Yes. But in this episode, I got the feeling that she was playing a part, and that maybe, but I don't know. Yeah. Or you think maybe it was like a, again, like a momentary thing? I do. I do think it was momentary because um, I think. I mean, either she just chose a bad way to do it, because I feel like uh, the smarter way to do it should have been more like, you said your brother's not around anymore? You yeah, said, well, she you could easily was. have, just don't mention Ultron, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Just, yeah, just ask more about Pietro. Why yeah. did you say he was, you yep. know? Yep, You know, and then to get him to talk about, how did he die? Although... Don't try to, you know, yeah. it's like, but... If, though, you're thinking, okay, she's in something and we have to help her get out of it, then I don't know. I Maybe, mean, yeah, her attempt but was then, like, i Then her reality. visit and, and the reason why she, you know, it's sort of like, it's hard to see that as moving towards helping her understand things. Available now. Thanos brand gloves and gauntlets. Casual elegance to die for. Just don't let it go to your head. Now, 50% off. We're back. What? Oh my God, we're in Westview. Um, uh, we're caught in Wanda's dream trap. No, uh, full disclosure, <laughs> had some technical issues. And so we're coming back to finish uh, our video uh, a, a day later. But um, that we're day. a dollar shorter. Me, and a dollar shorter. That day actually gave me a chance to reflect. When last we were talking, we we're talking about Monica Rambo and how self aware she is. Did she think she was Geraldine? Or was she at some point there convinced she was uh, Monica Rambeau pretending to be Geraldine? Mm. And I think one of the things about this episode, in fact, it, it's it's Wanda's labor, right? It, so it yes. goes on a while. That joke is carried on, in my opinion, maybe a little too long, frankly. But I get it. In real life, labors go on for a while. I don't yes. think they're played for laughs in the real world. But anyway, so... <laughs> But but oh, it, you never been a father. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, uh, but it occurred to me that there is a, a a method to the madness of why they were constantly showing like oh that broke nope the piping no well, my water broke and oh the stork and uh, he come came to life and I can't get rid of him. I think what that is saying is 
during this pregnancy and during the labor in particular, uh, Wanda's power over her world is weakened. Mm. Uh, like the stress put on her from giving birth has weakened her ability to control her world. Mm. Um, hence, people that are completely under her spell are no longer are, are becoming more self-aware. People like Herb. So Dr. Nielsen, he's like, we can't escape. Vision himself starting to get well. Wait, this is, seems wrong. Um, and perhaps Geraldine, you know, has this, oh yeah, your brother was killed by Ultron. Um, and so I think maybe that's what this thing is trying to say, that in the moments of in great stress, Wanda's ability to maintain this illusion uh, lessens. And maybe that's a way mm -hmm. that later on, uh, they use that that notion to try to defeat this, uh, you know, illusory world. Know. Just mm. a thought. What do you think there, good sir? What do I think? Um, I think you may be overthinking it. Okay. Uh, I do that. I do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's possible that the uh, pregnancy just took a uh, long time is because that's the, what they wanted to do um, for this episode. You know, for me, uh, they were just playing you know, the sort of beats that they wanted to comedically in terms of what was going on. So I didn't find it especially long. I mean, uh, you know, in some ways I felt like this episode was more in keeping with the um, spirit of the sort of original shows and the previous ones in a way. Uh, the first one was reminiscent of I Love Lucy and Diff and Dyke, but, you know, it wasn't... It didn't fit I got well you. for me, sort of the humor of it. Um, and well, I, I, also I mean, it wasn't a deal breaker. The second they... one, too. No, I'm not saying it was bad necessarily. Yeah. I just feel like this third one, though, felt more like the Brady Punch to me. I got you. <laughs> Even though you didn't have that sort of, you know, plot device there because they already had kids. But um, there were a number of aspects of it that seemed, in a way, that they hit better than they did uh, in the previous episodes, that's all. Okay, okay. It just occurred to me that maybe they were thinking, okay, we all we want to lay down this truth that... I mean, it's possible, stress, you know, you could have, you could have, you know, you could have uh, said that when, um, uh, you know, Mr. Hart was interrogating her about that, that was causing her to be stressful, and that's why he ended up choking, you know, and that, you know, that was definitely sort of a break, you know, with... with um, Yep. Uh, yeah, Mr. Mrs. Hart pleading with her right to uh, wait, to wait, help stop to it. stop it. Stop it. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Um, yeah. Um, when uh, um, Dottie was telling her that she didn't trust her, that was the sort yeah, of break that's in a that good episode. Point. She says, "I don't believe you." Yeah, I don't believe even you. more to the point. Like, oh, okay, that's right, a big yeah, deal. I don't believe and you. Then, and she's like, oh, 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 and like that's when. Things that start to happen. break through, and then she gets hurt, and and she falls back into the spell. So, uh, you know, so yeah, it might be, it might be. Yeah. Um, so perhaps I can imagine a scenario where Monica Rambeau, now on the outside, uh, maybe relays that information to Sword. Like, look, okay, here's what happened. She started to lose control. I brought up Ultron. <laughs> she kicked me out. <laughs> um, you know. Anyway, so mm. they. Maybe they start to come up with some kind of a tactic. No Ultron A talk. Yep. <laughs> right. Ulk day. <laughs> Don't bring up the brother. Yes. Uh. <laughs> the robot who must not be named. Robot who must not be named. Um, so, that said, I think, um, yeah, you mentioned you thought maybe... Um, Next episode, we might see the kids going to school or something. You meant accelerated age aging, perhaps, or perhaps. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, part of me feels like maybe we'll have um, most of the episodes partly take uh, place in this uh, in this world, and another part of me thinks that we're about to leave it. Oh, wow. um, so I don't know. You know. Uh, at what I think point, we've seen enough sort of scenes a, from the trailer, from the season trailer, that we haven't seen yet that I feel like there's at least a few episodes still to go of being in this world, and, you know, being in TV land. But Right, yeah, and I guess uh, technically we're, yeah, we're only four we're episodes We're in episode three, in, right? and then there's nine three, total, yeah, so we got six more to go. Yeah, 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 so six more to go, so... 
<laughs> it's hard to say. So that'll be interesting to see what the show morphs into when eventually, whether it's this season or if they have a season two, at some point they're going to stop I had to this put conceit money and move on, on to something else. If I had to put money on it, I would bet that there's not a second not a second season. You think it's just like a miniseries? Yeah, I think I, so. The, I, I hear you because you'd have to change the tone of it so much. If you, well, if yeah, you I mean, well, the TV idea. I mean, this is supposed to be momentous, right? This is really supposed to change things. Right. And so uh, the pretext for it was, would be like, oh, and here's them together again. I guess you just, yeah, you'd really have to change things where it wouldn't be, yeah, you it, know, it, oh, here we are. In, it would just be just Wanda and Vision story. Yeah. continuing some story, but not in a yeah. warp bubble in Westview. Yes. Yeah, right, exactly. exactly. Oh, anyway, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing where Vision they go Wanda. with this. Vision one. <laughs> <laughs> so we turn out Westview has the W and the V Wanda Vision. Ooh. Anyway. Ooh, that's clever. It is clever. I didn't come up with Ooh. it, but I didn't it's know uh, people watching us were so clever. Uh that yes, clever people I watch Tell them read the comments. It's really Matt who cares about you. <laughs> I'm the one with the, <laughs> the, 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 the reply, reply. Okay. <laughs> Pretending to be Matt Paul. Loves you. Yes, that's right. Uh, <laughs> it's really good at it, actually. I'm going to hire him. Thank you, as always, Paul. Appreciate it, good sir. Sure. Um, and we're going to be back talking about episode four and also episodes uh, nine and ten of The Expanse. Uh, so come on back for that. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.